Good morning, Frederick. It's another week. Happy Monday, April 15th. I'm your host, Danny Gurry. Just a reminder, it's tax day. Mwah, mwah. You have until midnight tonight to get your tax returns postmarked and sent, unless you're like us and you do an extension or your accountant does an extension for you, which we're so happy about. Um, glad we have somebody looking out for us anyway. Good Morning Frederick is live in the Everything Frederick and More group. Also on, that's on Facebook, as well as YouTube on the Everything Frederick Live channel. Please subscribe to the channel, share the videos, comment and engage with everything you see on social as well. This is something that's free, simple to do, and could make a huge impact for one of our small businesses. I want to start off today by welcoming some of our newest advertisers, Dreamscape Slumber Events, Pulling for Veterans, and We Help You Move. I really appreciate the support, and it's going to allow me to keep doing this show for quite a while, hopefully. In the show description, wherever you've seen it, I've put the link to join me on the program live. So if you have something to share, click the link. You'll be waiting until I bring you on to the show. Look, Frederick, this show is all about you, and if you have an announcement to make, we want to hear it. So please click the link and join me in a program today or any day. Uh, today's giveaway, we're giving away a pair of tickets to the TJ Frederick High Bingo, which is this Sunday, April 21st at Lewistown Fire Hall. It's a fundraiser for the class of 2024's Safe and Sane Party. If you don't know what the Safe and Sane Party is, it is uh, an after graduation event. It keeps the kids safe because it's like one of the highest uh, accident dates, which is horrible. So we want to keep all the kids safe and they have to raise a lot of money to do so. Uh, today, packed show, I talk with Salyer McLaughlin. He's making a movie about Frederick and you're all invited to participate and I have details on that. I got a chance to chat with Angie Smith Heisler the drama teacher from Linganore High School, and we hear all about how the costume company took their money, which was terrible, but I will tell you, there is a good news at the end of that. And finally, I chat with Jessica from Dreamscape Slumber Events, and once you see what she does, you're gonna want a party for yourself, for sure. I'm already gotta try to plan one. We wanna thank the sponsor of the program, Fox Tree Designs. They printed all my swag. I'm wearing my t-shirt. Can't really see it. Got to step back here. Love it though. Uh, they do sweatshirts, t-shirts, and stickers for me, but they also do full coloring lettering for signs, banners, and labels, and vinyl lettering for automobiles. FoxTreeDesigns.com. Let's get this thing started. Weather Today, sponsored by Lightbridge Academy. They have their grand opening Saturday, this coming Saturday, from 10 to 2. I'll actually be there live from 10 to 11 a.m. And we'll have some Good Morning Frederick swag to win. There's tons of free stuff for all for the kids, carnival games, magic show, and tons more. All the details are on the Everything Frederick calendar. Today, partly cloudy with a high of 83. Tomorrow, also cloudy with a high of 78. And Wednesday and Thursday, we got showers with temps in the low 70s. But how gorgeous was yesterday? Oh my goodness. I'm so excited for the nice weather. Uh, in local sports, I don't do a lot of sports reporting, but my voice is a little bit hoarse uh, because of our game yesterday. The Frederick Flying Cows won in a very tight game. I think we were trailing a majority of the game. They give me heart heart attack. Um, and if you didn't know that Frederick had a professional basketball team, well, we do. And they're so fun. I'm telling you, these games are good. They play at Hood College uh, and they're undefeated at home. Woo, woo. We love that. Uh, and this coming Saturday, we're calling it's Muau Night. Uh, so come to the game in your best Hawaiian shirt. Have a great time. It's so fun for the entire family. And if you do come out, please stop by and see me. 
Uh, we have a lot of fun at the games. If you read something cool online, please send it through to me. Or maybe you have some good news to share. Maybe your stores, your shop's expanding. Maybe your daughter graduating high school. We love that. Maybe it's your birthday. We want to hear all about it. So you can email everythingfredericlive at gmail.com. Or of course, you can text 888-465-2944. And those, uh, that information is scrolling along the bottom of the screen. Okay, when a local high school got taken for $8,000, oh my gosh, the Frederick community uh, stood up and uh, helped. I got a chance to chat with Angie Smith-Heisler, the drama director at Linganore High School. Been in the Frederick community and watching social media recently, you may have heard the story of the disaster of the costume company that ran off with Linganore High School's money. I am here with Angela Smith Heisler, who is the director of Linganore Drama. And uh, I tell you, my heart just broke for you guys. I can't even imagine what, what it was like. Kind of walk us through how that all happened. Yeah, so. Um... A couple of months ago, when I was doing my research for costume rental companies, the initial company we wanted to go with, we had used previously for other like past shows. They were booked out for the weekend of our show, which is next weekend. So I had to kind of scramble and look for another company to rent from. And I came across this company that had been posting in a Facebook group for high school directors. And it seemed like a very attractive company. They posted very professional pictures. They had a very professional looking website with positive reviews. And um, a mem somebody from the company reached out to me and provided a very detailed costume plot. And they were very timely in their communication and, and emails and all that. So we went ahead and booked with the company and had to pay a pretty high amount in order to reserve this um, professional looking costume package um, but that was like back in December oh and then like months of rehearsal go by and you kind of forget about it until you start getting closer and closer to the production weekend. And last week, actually the last week of March, um, I got contacted by the company because they charged me an additional like $900. And when I reached out to them and said, Hey, you know, what are these additional charges for? They tried to tell me that it was for coverage of shipping charges for a large pub that we were renting. And on top of the shipping charges, they were charging like insurance to cover the shipping. So I, I guess I didn't really think anything of it at that point. I was like, okay, you're right. It's a large puppet. It probably would cost a good amount to ship. But then we left for spring break, which was the first week of April. And I took a group of my drama students down to Disney World for a field trip during spring break. So not really thinking at all about Shrek or rehearsal or anything. We're, we're in Disney mindset. Yeah. But I started to feel kind of uneasy because at that point we were like a week out from receiving the costumes and I had heard no word from the company about shipping numbers or tracking or like any sort of confirmation. And um, and then the last day of Disney, which was last Friday, I saw an article posted in my director's group that the headline caught my eye. The headline said, Pittsburgh High School out $8,000 and no costumes. And I thought, wow, that, that's kind of, Familiar. It sounds familiar. So I read the article and like my heart just dropped. It was the company that oh. we were using. And the, the article talked about how the company had cut ties. Their email wasn't working. They weren't answering phones. So I was like, okay, wait a second. Let's just step back. Maybe this is just a fluke. Maybe this isn't happening to me too. And I, I couldn't also, I couldn't panic because I had a bunch of my drama kids with me at Disney World. So I had to like, right, promise, right. Please. So I did my research. I reached out to my financial secretary here. She tried to reach the company, no answer. They weren't in answering any emails or anything like that. And so by Saturday, we knew like, this is for real, this is happening. Oh my gosh. Like I can't, first of all, you know, it's, I understand that this, you know, you guys, when you do these productions, it's to, you know, you got, you have to get the costumes and you rent yeah. them and you do all of that. but you know, you're a teacher and you're trying to teach these students and you're trying to put on this production and it's not, you know, it's kind of not top of mind for all that. How horrible that this company has done this uh, yeah. to, uh, I'm assuming, number of schools, obviously at least two. Oh, I'm sure. I'm sure. And you know what? They always say hindsight is 2020. And like looking back on it now, when I look back on the whole process, I can start to spot some of the red flags that I probably should have 
like zeroed in on at the time. Yeah. But um, like a couple of weeks ago, well before we left for spring break, they had mentioned that they had to cancel one of their other contracts with another school last minute because a teacher hadn't sent in their measurements in a timely manner. And so I, did, I didn't think anything of it, but you know, looking back on it now, that might be, um, I don't know, an indication of another company or another school that they had like taken advantage of. I don't know. It's yeah, it is what yeah. it is, and it was it's very e hard to. It's to, easy to look back, right? Yeah, easy absolutely. to look back and go, "This is where I could have done." <laughs> yeah, but you did. You didn't know, obviously. So yeah. you come home, you post, you create a GoFundMe. Yeah. So Sunday night, I I emailed out to my, the families of my cast and crew. I was very transparent in the email. I explained the whole thing that happened. I. Um, I just said, like, we're out, we're $8,000, $9,000 in the hole, and we've got no costumes coming. Um, and I, I said, there are a couple things on our Amazon wish list we could order, but we have to kind of scramble and figure this out. And I wasn't actually the one that created the GoFundMe. It was actually my drama booster officers who created it because they wanted to, like, supplement the money that we had lost. Because the word I had received from FCPS at the time on Saturday or Sunday of last week was we might not be able to recover the $8,000 because it was past the 90 day window of charges that they could like dispute. So when we heard that, we were like, oh man, we're, we're now not going to be able to get our money back and we're not going to be able to pay a new costumer, you know, in the short amount of time we have. So, and then, so they posted the GoFundMe like Sunday night, I think it was like 1030. And when like the next morning by 10 AM, it had already like surpassed $6,000. It was crazy quick. Yeah. And it's crazy. Now you're at $11,800, which is awesome. But having the money is one thing, yeah. getting the costumes for the production, right? Something altogether different. So how has that gone? So we are working with a local costumer named Flo Arnold. She was super sweet about agreeing to come in last minute. Cause you know, normally these kinds of rental packages, you have to book out weeks in advance. So she was really nice about stepping in. She came on Tuesday to do some fittings with the actors and any like holes or additional needs that she couldn't meet for our costuming. There were so many other local high schools and, and theater companies that stepped up to offer things. Like, I think we'll be fine. We've got pretty much everything covered. We're still kind of covering up and doing some alterations, but uh, we'll be good. We'll be great. <laughs> yeah, point. it'll be great. Yeah. So when is the production? So we open Thursday. We have a show okay. next Thursday night, next Friday night, next Saturday, and then we have a Sunday matinee. Yes. And then we'll be finished, yeah. Awesome. And is there anything else that the community can do to help? Like, do you guys have anything at this point that you need covered? No, I think I think everybody, I mean, it's been really heartwarming to see how generous everybody has been, but yeah. I just wanted to like take a moment to like tell, I mean, cause I'm, I think there's some misconceptions within the public uh, or people who aren't, who don't have kids in theater that, especially for, with Frederick County, when we're putting on these productions like fall plays or spring musicals, we don't get funding from the school. We don't get funding from Frederick County. So like we have to craft and put these shows together with the budget that we have and most of those budgets are put together from like past ticket sales or donations right so to to have a major hit like that like eight thousand dollars that's like a program breaker you know we would we might not be able to put a show on next year if the community hadn't stepped up and helped so i i really think that people don't realize just how hard working the theater programs have to be in order to put on these big shows yeah <laughs> yeah i think you're right i think they just assume that oh you guys must have this huge uh budget that you dip into yeah. and uh but those of us who have been through the school system anytime recently know what theater you know departments do to fundraise working hard All right. 12 yeah. months of the year mm -hmm. to get two productions done so yeah. look we really handed to you it's one of the things i love about this community though is um you know, in, in times like this, it was so fun to watch everybody step up yes. and support. And uh, now the community can support by buying a ticket, seeing the show and uh, supporting this program so that it stays for a long time to come. Yes, absolutely. And if you want to, you can go to www.showticksforyou.com and search up Lingonore. You can buy tickets to come see the show. I promise it's going to be a good one. There's some really talented kids in the cast. And now they're going to be wearing costumes. So. Now they'll have costumes. <laughs> yeah. I love it. Well, Angela, we appreciate your tenacity and um, 
candor in just getting through this. And look, I think uh, we wish a thousand paper cuts to that company That's for right. running off with all of that money and um, wish you guys the best show week ever. Awesome. Thank you so much, Danny. <laughs> Wow. So this is again, Frederick is a spectacular place. You'll never convince me otherwise. Uh, I, it's, it's fantastic uh, to see the support for Linganore High School drama. And uh, boy, that does make you feel good. We got more feel good. We call this the feel good files. I want to thank Pulling for Veterans for uh, sponsoring Feel Good Files. Sign up uh, for their flea market coming up in April, July, and September. First one's April 28th, 9 to 3 at the AmVets Farm. Mark your calendar to go shop or talk to them about getting a booth. You can reach them at outreach at pullingforveterans.com. Salyer McLaughlin is bringing 1940s Frederick to life in film with his adaptation of the book From the Brink to Brilliant by Don Linton and Kate McDermott in a two-part film documentary. And every one of us can take a part. Let's hear from Salyer right here. Right. I am here with Salyer McLaughlin. You are taking on a project about Frederick's history. Mm -hmm. Let's step back just a little bit and lead up to this project. Where, where, where did you start and I mean, we don't have to go back to birth, but you know, certainly. How did, how did we get here with Frederick? Well, I was about 20 years old and I was living in Los Angeles. Um, I had just gotten there. I was going to night school. I was going to UCLA Film School and I got my first job with Warren Miller Ski Films. And I learned 16 millimeter photography and editing. We were cutting uh, the old reels and we would splice them oh, together yeah. for dissolves. Yeah. Um, and then soon after that, I got uh, a job with Body Glove International. It's the creative director there. And then uh, started uh, developing television commercials and uh, teamed up with a couple other guys. We started a production company called West End Productions. We were based in, in Manhattan Beach and then Santa Monica uh, and then up in Westwood. Um, and we were doing a lot of uh, fashion videos mm. uh, and, and commercials and um, just developed a real interest in producing. And I was working with my partner, who's a pretty good director, who was a better photographer than I was. Yeah. So he was directing, I was producing. <clears throat> and then I learned after a few years that really, uh, you know, um, the more creative one on the set is your directors and that's what i wanted to do right. uh, more than the actual administration of the project so so yeah the producer is kind of is the <clears throat> money person right or the handles the finance and the business end. it handles all of the logistics yeah uh, more of the logistics in terms of yeah, that's the actual not fun. production <laughs> <the> or <laughs> creative the director handles more of the uh, on set yeah. the talent uh the vision right the vision yeah, yeah the vision yeah. and uh if they can get involved in the edit, that that always helps. Uh, and, and certainly, if you can write it and direct it and cut it yourself, you're going to have a, a better project right. ultimately. So, yeah. I learned all of that, um, you know, early on. So as a result, I've, I've been able to get fortunate enough to have some good projects where I've been uh, I've been allowed to, you know, 100% totally create, write, um, direct, and edit. Yeah. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah. So this project, is this your brainchild or is this a consortium of people who came together that wanted to do this? I had the opportunity to recently produce a few other documentaries, one for Colonial Jewelers okay. to celebrate their 75th anniversary right. in business, the longest running business in downtown Frederick. And in doing so, uh, was able to do a lot of research on what happened to the downtown in the 60s and 70s. And... Um, and that was quite successful. Everybody seemed happy with that. And the night of the premiere at the Weinberg, uh, Rick Weldon was emceeing that. And Rick and I had not had a chance really to spend much time together um, since he took over the chamber. And um, he gave us a really nice introduction. 
And, uh, and I called him the next day and I said, you know, Rick, I really, I'm really wanting to do a film about Frederick. Can you help me mm -hmm. uh, generate the support in the community? He at the time and still is uh, part of this bagel group, which is uh, <laughs> Laura Fritz from the county and Kara from, from downtown Frederick Partnership and Richard from uh, Richard Griffith from mm -hmm. Uh, DED, mm -hmm. there's five of them, and Dave uh, Zadellis from oh, Tourism. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So he had this this group together, and I felt like if I could get Rick's <clears throat> um, commitment, that he could get the commitment of the bagel group behind it. Yeah. And so, at the same time, I had I had I had been reading this book called From the Brink to Brilliant, which is Kate McDermott's book that Don Linton commissioned her to do to write. Mm -hmm. And uh, after reading that, and I had read, the, I'd read several books. I'd read Ron's books and George George Delaplane's books in connection with the the piece I did for Colonial Jewelers. There's this fascinating history that took place in the '70s, and I felt like the, from the brink to brink, really um, encapsulated like the most interesting parts of Frederick's history in a in a pretty short, you know, it's a 120 page book. Yeah. And so I went to. Um, Rick and I went to Don Linton and met with Don Linton and said, you know, we want to option your book. Basically, we want to protect the rights to the book. We want to make a film about it. And um, Don and Kate agreed, and we signed an agreement with them. So that's where we are at this point, right? So you yeah. guys have kind of, obviously, you have the book, and, and you're, you've got kind of the story, but it's now at the point, at what point? Where are we? Well, we, uh, we've raised some, a, a good amount of money um, from the Osherman Foundation and from the Delaplane Foundation and from the City of Frederick's Department of Economic Development, from mm -hmm. Tourism, um, and uh, a handful of other sponsors. We have a fundraiser coming up on the 18th of April okay. where we hope to, to gain a lot of financial support. At We're going to be premiering a trailer that we've produced, a two-minute trailer, okay. that will give the those who attend, you know, a good idea of what this film's going to be about. But yeah. Yeah. So this yeah. event uh, on the 18th is um, for people who are interested in in investing in this film Correct. and kind of seeing the first look at what's been done. Right, right. The style of it. Yeah. And the, uh, the, the, the story itself, like what. Right. Where, know, there's a lot how, of it's, how it's headed. Yeah. 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 Yeah, very good. Yeah. So where are you in the, uh, just guessing, let's just say the uh, the event on the 18th is super successful. Do you feel like it can be, the final funding can, can come from that event? Or do you feel like you guys have kind of a plan over the next six, nine, 12 months to finalize all of that? I think as soon as, uh, as soon as we have this fundraiser on the 18th, the word's going to get out that um, it's a substantial project that could really do a great benefit to the city of Frederick mm -hmm. because it's not um, it's not a typical uh, documentary. Um, we call ours a docu film, but it's really more of a film. It's really a movie with real characters and real recreations mm. and re real uh, reenactments. And, uh, you know, the first part, uh, part one of the two-part series is, is set in the 70s. And, um, and it is from the point of view of a couple of newspaper reporters and photographers. And oh, in wow. In particular, one, Amos Brown, who was the first black photographer um, hired by the, by, the, by, the, by the News Post, um, became chief of photography soon after joining the company. And he had an interesting perspective on it as uh, the one who was in charge of all the photography that took place the day of the flood. Okay. <clears throat> There's also another uh, an, a reporter there, Neil Sandler, who's been helping uh, consult on the film, who is, uh, will be a part of it, as will Ed Waters and Susie McNichols and Darlene Wiles and some of these reporters and photographers that worked for the paper back in the... Uh, late 60s, early mm. 70s, up to about mid, uh, right after the flood, 1977, which, which I believe was a time period in Frederick's history, especially when it comes to the downtown, when the vision was really set for yeah. what we're experiencing today. And when, in, when in 1977 did that flood happen? It happened in 1976 on uh, oh, October, 76. October okay. 9th. I moved up here in 1977, so I was trying to think, oh, I don't remember that. So in 76, yeah, the town flooded, and then... Well, what happened was the town was already, because of a lot of volunteerism 
and this group of rebels, uh, this group that really went up against the old guard uh, here in Frederick um, with new ideas. Uh, so th th this, 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 th this vision actually was percolating back in the late 60s, George Delaplane, what he did with the newspaper, how they were able to save the post office and the, right. and the county courthouse from leaving town. That these groups decided to stay. George Delaplane was a big part of that. Um, but so there was already this, this, this revolution that was happening in terms of how we're going to keep our downtown intact. Yeah. And then the Great Flood hit in, in 76. And it was because of that momentum that had already sort of gained, gained ground, um, the flood didn't kill us. And because yeah. of Ron Young's vision for this yeah. Carroll Creek uh, yeah. uh, revitalization uh, and the flood plan, and he was able to raise the $36 million that it took, uh, that vision to create this, this, uh, this outdoor entertainment uh, center for, for the city, much like the San Antonio River Walk, mm -hmm. which is where, they, where, they, where that was inspired by. Um, they were able to get, get, make up the ground that they had lost with the flood yeah. and actually use it to their, to their benefit to then get to the, the, the full support of uh, the county, state, and, and uh, to, to get behind the flood project. Great. And, yeah. How can people of Frederick, just typical everyday people watching this, how can they support this project? Well, they could come and spend forty-five dollars and buy a ticket okay. to the uh, to the to the premiere of the trailer. Okay. Um, and they could uh, they could go to our webpage and they can they can donate money. It's tax deductible. Okay. All, all the funds are running through our foundation, Big Blue Foundation, which is a five hundred one c three. So excellent uh, for companies and individuals who are looking for a tax write off. It's a good yeah. way to do it. Yeah, this is going to require a good amount of uh, energy, a lot of resources, and a good amount of money yeah. to complete uh, because this, again, is, is a film. You yeah. know, it's, a, it's a film that's going to be shown theatrically. We have limited release with the uh, warehouse cinemas, which have agreed to run it, as well as all of our trailers. Yeah. And uh, this will run in film festivals across the state of Maryland, Virginia, and Delaware and then maybe nationally. Um, awesome. So it's going to run mostly theatrically, uh, and then it will be uh, also presented to Maryland Public Television um, uh, once it's, once it's yeah. finished. Yeah. What, are your, what is your hope to start actual production? Well, we already have. Okay. We, so we, last Monday we started um, in Baltimore at the Baltimore Museum, in Baltimore Museum of Industry, which is a... Um, which is an interesting museum, and part of that museum is a perfectly recreated uh, print shop from the 1970s. So, because one of our central characters is George Delaplane, and the newspaper is certainly a big part of the, the, right. the story of Frederick, um, we chose this location to shoot our first scenes, which make up the majority of the trailer that uh, we produce. So, we've already had our first day of production. We hired, we cast George Delaplane. It looks a lot like him when he was 40 <laughs> years old, but we'll be casting Ron Young and Don Linton and Peggy Pilgrim and some of these other legends that were part yeah. of the downtown scene back in the early 70s. Are you guys still looking for extras? That's what people are going to ask me if they oh, want to yeah. be in the film. Oh, yeah. So we, uh, <laughs> we're, we're going to do a couple interesting recreations. And I think this for people, you know, I grew up here, I've uh, been here since 1977, moved, moved away and came back, but I... I've never even heard this history, so I think for yeah. for people who are yeah. um, not Chris Hall, who's a great friend of mine and historian in Frederick, um, I think that it, this is an eye opener. That you know Frederick's history is long. I mean, we hear about it, you know, the Civil War and all of that, but really to to see it on the screen, I think, is really going to be powerful and exciting. Well, Chris, you know, Chris is certainly he's probably done more than anybody to um, raise people's awareness of the, the history of Frederick, and that goes back to 1745. Yeah. But what people haven't seen as much of is more their contemporary history, which is what, what our film yeah. deals with. So from 1945 on, yeah. and uh, there was this period of time in the late 70s, early, early late 60s, early 70s, mm. where the vision was set by this group of rebels. <laughs> I love that. Um, who uh, really are, are uh, responsible for 
you know, what uh, the town has really become yeah. in 2024. And people don't, they don't really know how that happened. No, no, I can, well, um, I can guarantee you, even those of us who live here probably don't And it's even fascinating know because there's a lot of, uh, people who live here, our history books tell us, you know, there were, there were these rebels that, mm. uh, that the Fredericktonians are fascinated by, Barbara Fritchie and, and uh, even Dan Daniel Delaney, who founded Frederick, was was somewhat of a rebel. Mm. You know, he 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 rebelled. He re rebelled the British crown um, and came to Ireland. Uh, came from Ireland here. So, yeah. you know, our roots are Celtic roots, uh, which I don't think a lot of people nope. know. But I mean, there's this kind of rebel spirit which um, has made Frederick uh, what it is and why it's developed the way it has. And the the Fort Dietrich complex was interesting. That brought in a whole new group of people from around the world yeah. that wanted more interesting art and more interesting entertainment. Um, and that was, a, that was a big part of uh, the growth of, of downtown Frederick. Um, so there are these pieces, you know, why is, why is Frederick, why, is, why are there so many artists here, musicians? You know, what is it that originally attracted them? But I think it's this rebel spirit that has yeah. a lot to do with it. Yeah. Um, Frederick was uh, was not happy with the with the norms of the day. They they were always seemed to be pushing the uh, boundaries a bit. You know, well, that's great because there's those yeah. of us yeah. where the status quo yeah. is no go. Yeah. So <laughs> I think I fit right in with the rebels of the bagel group. <laughs> I love it. All right, so the big big stuff. You guys need to buy a ticket for April 18th. Boomtown, the trailer premiere at Warehouse Cinemas. Buy, support, <laughs> donate. Mm. Let's get this movie made. Mm and show the world what mm -hmm. why we love frederick and that's mm -hmm. uh i think it's great yeah one thing you yeah. want everybody to know about this project for you um well it wasn't the money it wasn't the money that uh, created this boom in frederick it was the it was the uh it was a renaissance in art that took place a renaissance yeah. in creativity and yeah. that's what the movie is mostly about well and i just yeah i love i love the foresight and the visionary um, uh, just really the, what people had so long ago. And I hope that that continues. That's why I love this mm. town so much, why I came back after so long. And um, it's for people like you, Salyer mm. McLaughlin, <laughs> Boomtown, uh, uh, April 18th. Yep, yeah, awesome. and the film will be ready uh, in the later fall. Awesome. Late fall of this right. year. Let's see if I can get a roll. We'll see you guys <laughs> next time. All right, who's going to sign up to be an extra with me? I think that's going to be a lot of fun, but we really want to thank Salyer and uh, Rhonda for inviting me into their home and uh, chatting with us. I think that's going to be a very exciting program, and I can't wait to head out to Warehouse this Thursday. Okay, I really, again, appreciate all the support. I want to thank Alexa from Charles Studio for the $100 donation to the Scott Key Prom. This is going to be their first ever prom. And if you have any fancy duds that you've been wanting to donate to a good cause or clean out of your closet, we are making sure that all the area high schoolers have something nice to wear if they want to attend their prom as well as the clients from the Scott Key Center. Uh, we've had so many people step up and donate and I just can't thank you enough. We are going to be announcing an open date soon for you to come to the home of Everything Frederick at 401 North Market Street to see if there is an outfit for you. If you are a high school student and you need something to wear to your prom, we would love to outfit you. So stay tuned. It's coming very soon because I know proms are coming up very quickly. Uh, also for the Scott Key Center, I'm raising money to help cover the food costs for the 125 guests that are going to attend. If you can help financially, even $10, please go to scottkeycenter.org and click on the donate button. Actually, if everybody who watched the video, these uh, streams donated $10, we would absolutely have our total, which would be great. And if you know of anybody with a classic car or convertible or a limo, uh, I would love to give uh, the Scott Key Center family a ride around the Keys parking lot. These guys are great, and uh, I want to shout out to them. They watch this show every day at lunchtime because of my friend Beth, 
who is there with them. And uh, she sent me a photo of me on the big screen in their classroom. And I was like, okay, wow. But I really do appreciate their support. And uh, we love you guys. And we're gonna have an awesome, awesome prom. So no matter, no matter what happens. Okay, coming up after the break, I chat with Jessica about her business, Dreamscape Slumber Events. All in One Events is Frederick's number one source for event rentals and entertainment. Please visit us on the web at www.aioeventgroup.com or call 1 727 8902 for more information. And we thank uh, All in Events and, of course, the real estate goddesses for that. Plus, we want to thank ANS Construction, a local and award winning woman and minority owned business located right here in frederick they specialize in roofing siding windows gutters patios and decks everything you're probably thinking about right now as the weather is getting warmer so give them a call 301-703-2157 or email ansconstruction.net and there is a special offer for good morning frederick viewers you can get $750 off any roof or siding replacement or $50 off any roof repairs. You just have to schedule them before April 30th. So give Sandra a call and tell her that Danny sent you. Thank her so much for that. All right. We want to thank We Help You Move, whether you're moving across the street or across the country. Nicholas and his team of moving experts can make the whole thing easy because moving is so hard. Veteran owned and a supporter of the Frederick community, wehelpyoumove.com. Okay, let me see if I can get this up here. I've got the calendar going. Um, so, so many events coming up. And again, this is exactly what happens when the weather gets nicer, right? You've got so much happening and uh, this week is no different. Okay, tonight, trivia at Frederick Social. Uh, Thursday, of course, it's the Boomtown trailer premiere at Warehouse Cinemas at 4 and 6 p.m. When you go to the calendar, you will be able to click on and get to the link to get your tickets or more information on that. This Saturday, again, very busy. We got the Lightbridge Academy Grand Opening, and I actually will be broadcasting or streaming live from 10 to 11. Tons of fun for the whole family. The kids are going to love it, so bring them out to 313 Ballinger Center Drive. Battle of the Bands coming up later this month on the 27th at Carroll Creek Amphitheater. Get your tickets now. It's gonna be a great afternoon to support the Boys and Girls Club of Frederick. And Pulling for Veterans Flea Market is on the 28th from nine to three at AmVets Farm. And booth spaces are available if you would like one. Uh, Craft Beer Festival is coming May 11th on Carroll Creek Linear Park. If you haven't been to that event, it is so fun. Gone uh, the last three or four years. Great time, and we're going to be chatting with uh, the event directors of uh, Craft Beer Festival uh, coming up soon. The link and details all on the um, Everything Frederick calendar. If you haven't checked that out yet, please do so. All you have to do is click on or, or go to Everything Frederick and more to the group. It is in the featured section, or just text the word calendar to 888-465-2944. And I'm more than happy to put up any events that you have, um, and we would love to share them with everyone. All right, it is now time to hear from Jessica from Dreamscape Slumber Events, and I'm telling you, you guys are all gonna wanna sleep over at your house. Really excited to highlight another amazing business in Frederick County. We're talking with Jess from Dreamscape Slumber Events. Hey Jess, how are you? 
I'm great. How are you doing this evening? I'm really well. Now, we first became connected when you just kind of launched your business. Tell us what made you decide that this you think is your future. Well, we, I have kids. My other half of this business is my stepmom. So this is a family gig. And we have a bunch of kids in our families and there's not many options in the community for kids that you can do stuff even just at home that where you don't have to go out to different venues and some of those get really pricey. Sometimes you just want an intimate gathering at home for or just because it uh, and we love to do and be extra with our kids. <laughs> I we're crafty it. so we just this is something that our soul truly loves to do and when we found this idea from my friend in florida we were like we should bring that here so this is where it all started <laughs> awesome and dreamscape slumber events you guys go to people's homes or i know we just talked about you have arranged if you can't do it in your own home, maybe some other locations where they can do this. But you set up these very cool themed kind of sleeping tent areas, right? So tell us how, how you decide um, what, what to do. So we figure out how many kids are going to spend the night. And if they have certain interests, we can do a customized theme that we decorate the TPs with the bedding, pillows, different lights, and anything extra that we find that goes with that theme. Um, and just go all out on decorating and these kids can hang out and have a comfortable space in either their home or other venues like we've discussed. And and they can hang out with their friends and have a good time. And some of our clients have um done spa parties or they have a neon glow night they have paint nights um our big swifty theme that is our top theme so far a lot of them have friendship bracelet making nights and it just oh, really wow. caters to each kid but we also have done these for adults too so uh, that's that, what i want to talk about a yeah. little bit <laughs> So tell, because, the, you know, I do think kind of the girls' night in is a is a great thing. I think probably started during the pandemic a little bit when things were opening up a little. Uh, but, yeah, I'd love to hear about uh, things that you guys have done for the adult side. Yeah, so we've done two so far. We have done the Neon Glow Night for a corporate event for a bunch of ladies that got together. That was really fun and the pictures were awesome. We couldn't share for privacy reasons. We could only share the setup, but not actually the event itself. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. And then we had another one, which was for a bridal party. So instead of them going out to a big bachelorette party, they decided to stay in and have a comfy cozy night in with some wine, champagne, some snacks. And it was like an old school girls slumber party that they didn't have to do anything we came in we set up it was very classy and they had the best night and they said that they are going to book us again for just a simple girls night in just because so i'm really excited to do that one next that one will be with our newest theme we're releasing um so you guys will have to follow the page and check us out for that yeah so you guys uh have some predetermined themes right so yes. you can come on to your website i'm assuming and choose one of the predetermined themes that you guys already have yes we have 12 in-house themes currently with more being planned or you can um work with us and we will create something customized to you if we don't have what yeah. you're looking for so we're very so flexible and we the, love the challenge. Yes, I love it. I love it. So, so exciting. Uh, what is the largest number of people you can right now uh, accommodate? It really depends on the size of the venue or the house. We can do up to 20 at one time. Wow. Uh, and if there's ever a need that we have more that needs to go out, on a specific night then we can take care of that and get more 
Yeah. Um, as long as we have like a two week notice and we're at our threshold, then we can get more in to be able to fit everybody in. Awesome. Awesome. And what areas do you guys service? We serve all of the tri-state area. So mainly Washington and Franklin County is the most served areas right now. We do serve Berkeley County um, for like the Martinsburg area and surrounding. We also do Franklin and Fulton County in Pennsylvania. So really Pennsylvania, Maryland, West Virginia. Um, we, we don't, we don't mind the travel as long as it's in with like an hour from our base mm -hmm. location, but, um, it really just depends, but we, we do all of the tri-state areas to simply put it. <laughs> yeah, that's really great. What has been the best thing that's happened since you've launched your business? Is there any kind of one thing, uh, that you, that really was like, okay, this is really cool. We had a girl in tears whenever oh. she she stayed out of the area when we went in to set up and decorate. Oh. And then the mom brought her in blindfolded. And when she seen everything, she was in tears. And then I was in tears. And I'm like, oh, my goodness. <laughs> it, That's that, the best, though. That was it. That was completely it. Pulling my heartstrings. I'm like, yep, we're going to keep doing this. And it, that's that's the best feeling is when. You know, kids aren't speechless, but when you can make them speechless, <laughs> the, that you won. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's really great. I mean, I love the whole idea of, you know, doing things at home with your friends, really just focusing on the friendship part, uh, the sleepover, making it comfortable, and just, again, like a little bougie, I guess, you know, doing going over the top. I think that's fantastic. If there was one thing you'd want everybody watching to know about you and your company, what would it be? Um, that's a tough question on the spot. I, as a company, we really just want everybody to know. We just want to create those unforgettable memories. You're not going to remember. And this is a quote from my stepmom, the other, the co-owner of this business is kids aren't going to remember the gift that you bought them on their seventh birthday or what gift you bought them on their 12th birthday, what they are going to remember is what you do. Yeah. The, those moments, those experiences. So we're, we want to bring more of those core memories to kids and the, and, and adults in the tri-state yeah. area, um, because that's what lasts a lifetime. We want to bring those unforgettable memories. I love it. All right. How, what's the easiest way for people to reach out to you? Um, if you contact us on our Facebook page, we do have a link to our email as well. And also an Instagram. We okay. are working on upgrading our, our website. So just bear with us on that. It's, it's still accessible. Um, but really yeah. whichever's easiest for you, we have three ways to reach us. Awesome. Jess, want to thank you so much for spending some time with us today. And we're going to have a follow up with Jess in not too long a time. We want to see what this setup is. We're going to show you what it looks like coming soon right here on Good Morning Frederick. Yes, thank you. I told you, I am absolutely going to set up a dreamscape party for friends and have a girly sleepover because who doesn't want to, I mean, if I were a kid right now, oh, I would be begging for one of these. So if, uh, if your child has a birthday coming up, um, why don't you contact her boys and girls? I've seen some really great, uh, boys designs as well. And, uh, yeah, so I, I think it, that's a great idea. All right, Shift Work and Play is Frederick's one and only co-working space designed to support those with young children. You can get your work done while your kids are supervised at play. Three solid hours of focus for you. If you can even stand, you'd probably get a week's worth of work done if you're working from home with kids right now. Uh, the kids are supervised at play and there's uh, activities scheduled plus open-ended child-led play. Go check it out. See for yourself. It's so quiet in the back, even while there are kids playing up front. And if you're looking for a private office space, you're not ready to graduate to signing your own lease. This is the perfect place for you because the private offices, you control the entire area 
Uh, you have 24 hour access and it's just a great place to collaborate with other local business owners. And uh, uh, Megan was telling me that some people have even gotten together and, and helped each other starting new businesses, which I absolutely love. Shift Work and Play is the place for you. Located just off Northeast Street, book a tour today at shiftworkandplay.com. Check them out. All right, uh, Promo Circus, you might have heard that name around. You see it on the close of the uh, Good Morning Frederick graphic that my brother did. I want to thank him so much for that. Promo Circus is a company I started recently to help local businesses be more efficient with their marketing dollars. And uh, I also do events and promotions. And if your company, and obviously we produce the stream, if your company would like to be a part of any of that, just let me know. I would love to help you out. And uh, I've got here, we've got some, because we've had some people sign on, which I'm absolutely so grateful for, uh, we do have some different marketing options available. Right now, what we have availability for are live stream remotes. Uh, where I would come to your place of business, maybe to celebrate an event, maybe you have something big going on. It would be for an hour, we would love to do that. I also have availability for 15 second video ads. So similar to the Goddess Group and all in one events, uh, we could run, and, and Dreamscape uh, as well, we could run one of those for you. Uh, and again, that one is just $25 a week or $40 per week, depending if you wanted to run it once a day or twice a day. So we can do that for you as well. Contact details are on that screen. If you need to screenshot, you can do it there. But uh, yeah, we really appreciate all the support. Obviously, it means that I'll be able to continue doing this for a little bit more time, which is great. Uh, and that leads us right up to market makers. These are the people that keep Frederick growing and the small businesses that employ thousands of people in our community. We want to thank Atlas Wood Floors, serving the area for more than 34 years. Go to atlasfloors.net get a quote and uh, get your new flooring today. They do wood, LVP, pretty much anything, they'll install it. So uh, that was uh, Jessica from Dreamscape was part of our market makers and we really appreciate that. Uh, we are looking for your recommendations, uh, handpicked by Everything Frederick Live. And here is a QR code and the bit.ly to our calendar the Everything Frederick Calendar, of course, has all the events in one place you'll need for the entire summer. And uh, the uh, handpicked, sorry, is a list that we are going to be putting out starting in May. This list will ever evolve and change based on your recommendations, but we hope to allow people to refer to it when questions like where's the best place to get a steak where's the best place to have a birthday party where's the best place for live music uh, it's not a voting competition we're actually going to list every single place that you guys recommend and uh, have it for access for people in the group and of course we will make it public as well all right whoo don't forget, if you'd like to win the pair of tickets to TJ Frederick High School Bingo on Sunday, this, uh, this Sunday, April 21st, text BINGO to 888-465-2944. Again, text BINGO. I'd love to send you and a friend to play BINGO and help Frederick High and TJ raise money for what they need. Well, that about wraps it up for today. Tomorrow, I speak with author Jessica McHugh. We call it From the McHugh-niverse. She shares with us her award-winning blackout poetry. And Tina from Dream Free Arts shows me that making a mess can be fun. And also, I'm going to show you the creators of the beautiful furniture at the home of everything Frederick, which is located at 401 North Market Street. We're gonna be inviting you all 
to the ribbon cutting and grand opening April 30th. Mark your calendars now. We'll be talking about it in upcoming episodes. Please be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel so you don't miss a single episode. It also gives you the capability to share from YouTube, uh, which you can't do from the private group. Uh, we really appreciate the support this weekend. I asked for more subscribers to hit 100, and we did. So now I'm on to the next. Uh, the more subscribers we get, the more businesses we can help, to be honest, because it gives more reach. And the more people that see these local businesses and perhaps give them a call and book them, the more we're helping our local community. All right, until tomorrow, be sure to search for Everything Frederick Live, also on TikTok. And you can follow me on TikTok as well, DannyGirl1124. Get out there and be great, Frederick. Mm -hmm.